Welcome to Archetypes. I'm Lee Woodruff, and I'm here with Kevin Connolly. Hi. Not only has he written a memoir called Double Take, but running now on the Travel Channel is Armed and Ready, which is his new show about... Basically, in a nutshell, take an activity or a sport you don't think a legless guy could do and then make him do it. Um, and en route to kind of overcoming all of those challenges and ultimately accomplishing my goal, whether it's cliff diving, street luging, skydiving, what have you, um, I usually have to build, with the help of like a local guide, some sort of adaptive apparatus or rig to allow me to accomplish my goal. So there's one episode where I'm street luging in LA, and if you've ever seen someone street luging, the first thing they do when they're going 50, 60 miles an hour and they need to break is they put their feet on the ground. So we had to reimagine the street luge for how someone, you know, who's a double amputee or doesn't have legs would do this. Can you talk a little bit about growing up? What was that like to be, I mean, you have the most incredible spirit. Did the spirit come because of, you know, being born without legs? Or would your parents say that you were that little boy from the moment you came out of the womb? I think there was a number of factors at play. Montana being kind of the semi-isolated and rural place that it is. I mean, we still don't even have Wi-Fi, which is really weird. I don't even know if Montanans will see this. No, but uh, the thing for me was that I went to school with the same 125, 150 kids. My teachers were all the same, my community members, and they were small enough where everyone knew me on a first name basis. And so Montana for me kind of created a little bit of this bubble where I grew up feeling completely normal. Um, and it wasn't really until I was studying abroad in New Zealand and then traveling again in Austria where, you know, this frustration kind of came to a head that I really realized, like, no, what you're doing is kind of crazy to the world at large. Talk to us about that. I mean, let's go back because you go through <clears throat> that in the book. Double Take is this beautiful, honest portrayal of your journey traveling and people's responses, showing us the world from your perspective. So while people were taking a double take at you, you were taking a double take with them? I think the first photo was taken when I was in Vienna, Austria, and had I was traveling by myself and had just kind of gotten to this almost breaking point where, you know, I couldn't speak Austrian. Um, and so there was the inherent language barrier there. And really, other than that, my only interaction with people was either getting stared at or having someone try and come up and give me money. Now, it's isolating enough to be traveling alone, but when your only human interaction is that, it can get doubly so. And so I was just rolling down a back street in Vienna and saw this guy come around the corner. And, you know, I haven't had legs for 27 years. I'm pretty good at reading the body language of when someone sees me and tries to process their information. Normally, everyone kind of does like a little double step, as it were. It's like, OK, that guy's in my reality now. Reconciling, reconciling, we're good. Um, and so I looked the other direction as I went past him and just took a photo blindly from my huh. hip. The point at which I came to was that you know, this is never gonna stop. You're gonna get stared at forever. Um, and so A, you need to reconcile that fact, but B, you know, you're a photographer. You can also turn this into artistic ammunition. And there was something that I discovered from, you know, if you look at point A being the, the inception of the photo series and the kind of frustrating isolation that went along with it. And then you look at point B, which is this kind of point where I'm at now, which is accepting A, that people are going to stare at you all over the world, but B, that human curiosity is what's going to really lend to some incredibly unique travel experiences. And that latter half of it, for me anyway, is the most important. What do you say when someone hands you a dollar bill? What's your answer? I have, I, I almost stopped shooting the photo series um, when I was in Sarajevo, Bosnia, because it, Sarajevo, Bosnia was a really kind of hard place for me to shoot in because I realized that, granted, yes, you know the background of your physical predicament, but you're also creating art off of the implied you know, sorrow or hardship of wherever it is that you're going. And so, I mean, in a lot of places people would ask, were you in a car wreck, were you an Iraqi war veteran? But there was no more immediate story than being in Sarajevo and seeing other people begging on, on the street that were missing limbs and were on either, you know, homemade skateboards or crutches or whatever. And so it, even as I was skating around the town, I could completely see myself fitting into that narrative. And it just made me feel bad. It made me feel terrible. And I, I didn't speak the local language, so I, I couldn't, you know, I could say sorry. I could pull out my camera. I could say American as many times as I wanted, but what I signified physically and visually overrode whatever was coming out of my mouth. And so oftentimes all I could do was just turn it over. So whatever money I got would just be flipped to the next person I saw pretty much. 
after a while it got tough because um, you know you'd get people starting to cry and stuff like that. So I mean, and it's it's difficult arriving at a social situation like that because you want to comfort, you want to explain, and you can do neither. Right, without the language. Mm -hmm. And what's your favorite photograph of all the very cool shots, and, and many of them are in the book, and mm -hmm. then of course there's, there's your traveling exhibition. Do you have one favorite? Yeah, well, one of the things that happened was I was never looking through the viewfinder for any of the photographs, mm -hmm. right? And never singling anyone out. So the idea was like, I want to prove a thesis statement, which is that everyone, regardless of their social, cultural, or economic background, is going to stare at you. And so I wanted to do that as objectively as possible, which for me meant not singling anyone out, shooting every subject that passes the lens, and then never looking through the viewfinder. The point at which I realized, like, okay, you really did figure out this technique was, uh, and this photo is actually in the book, I was crossing a street in Cluj-Napoca, Romania, and as I was crossing, this car came out and ended up, like, hitting me. Um, not hard, but like it was in the midst of stopping when it hit me. But at that point, I was skateboarding at <clears throat> excuse me, full speed across the street, shooting behind my back at this priest on a cell phone and getting hit by a car, and I still got the shot. Oh it's like, goodness. okay, we're good. <laughs> and your mother hasn't had a heart attack yet. It's like, yet. trick shot! <laughs> yeah. oh, no wonder you're doing this show. What's the most exciting episode of Armed and Ready? Um, to you. Ex okay, I was going to yeah, say exciting for me or exciting for viewers? Exciting for you. Because <laughs> I watch some of the scarier episodes and I'm like, I didn't enjoy I, that at all. I'm not watching those, by yeah. the way. Yeah, um, I really liked the NASA episode. The zero gravity flight was probably the single most surreal and amazing experience I've ever had. Like, people always say, like, when you're in zero gravity, you float and you assume, you know, naturally so that it's going to be similar to water or you're just gonna be hanging up in the air. But they don't tell you that your organs, your blood, your veins, everything goes weightless, which, I mean, if you think about it, it's obvious, but it creates this completely out-of-body experience where you lose your sense of self to a certain degree. Really? Yeah. It, it was, I've never even heard that described before. Yeah. So you're not just floating, you're... Everything's of... floating. Your blood no longer weighs anything. And it's this like feeling that I've, I don't think can be replicated any other way. What's the episode of Armed and Ready that your mom is going to freak out? Jousting. Most? She's going to be so pissed. Jousting? She's going to be were so mad. Were you on a mad. horse jousting? In a suit of armor. Seriously? I guess the suit of armor is good. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think the protection. But, yeah, but still, it was, that was definitely the scariest for me. I mean, okay, what's the first thing you do when you jump on a horse? Well, you put your legs in the stirrups, don't you? You're skipping the first part. You oh. straddle the horse. You don't perch leglessly on top of the horse. It's you're, basically you're right. like taking an, oil, taking an oil drum, tipping it over on its side, and then putting a bowling pin on top and just being like, all right, stay. <laughs> and that's more or less what I felt like. Once we had the shield and lance in hand, a little snafu happened. I almost went over the front of the horse. And I mean, he's, I'm sitting on this horse in a suit of armor, and he's literally drilling new straps into the saddle as we're going. But this is part of the, the show's concept, yeah. is that things have to sort of happen on the fly. Exactly. You've got to come up with solutions. And I mean, the, a lot of it's just stems from growing up in Montana, not having access to you know a lot of high tech prosthetics or people with amazing engineering expertise, expertise mm -hmm. or anything like that. It was MacGyver. You know, what can you rig with what you have at hand? When the show's running, you're going to be you're going to be fighting back fan mail, my friend. I've already been getting recognized. I mean, it's. It's not that hard. It's not like I can put on a baseball cap and it's like, is that Hugh Jackman? I can't tell. <laughs> um, yes. Which, I mean, saying like, hey, you're Kevin Connolly. You have that TV show is a far cry better than someone thinking that you're a beggar. So I still get stared at, but the context is now a lot more positive. Well, Kevin, thank you so much thank you. for joining us. This is Archetypes, and Kevin Connolly has not only his book Double Take, but his show on the Travel Channel, Armed and Ready. We're so, so honored to spend this time with you. Thank you for being here at Archetypes, and we hope you come back. Thanks. <laughs>